welcome to where the furniture isn't always the best but them views they are amazing, amazing. amazing. The floor, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the 13th floor where the furniture isn't always the best <laughs> but the views are amazing if you haven't been uh with us in some time we did upgrade the furniture so you know it's not you know hollywood star or anything it's not mtv cribs but it's good we got a nice view still and everything so i'm here today full 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 attendance so we're happy to be here with you and uh we just thank you and uh thank you for listening and we hope you'll continue to tune in throughout the holidays i believe we'll have uh two more episodes this holiday season uh before it's next year so tune in because we're going to talk about you know some interesting things and uh yeah keep rocking keep rocking fellas how everybody how's everybody doing we here baby great living the dream <laughs> all is well all is well all is well that's what that's what, that's what i like to hear that's what i like to hear man yeah. uh congratulations to big, uh, big. yeah big yes, yes big yes. congratulations um i failed to mention it in the last episode shame on me but you want to uh, save that for for that that the, the face you want to this have all the yeah suit. yeah yeah have everybody here see if his facial expression changes when we say that he's officially an engaged <laughs> man <laughs> big dog here. status <laughs> yeah we are out here my man got a fiance yeah fiance 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 <laughs> yeah yep yeah, yeah. so um hey man so you know if 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 it's cool with you what'd be real cool is if we maybe post a clip you know where everybody can see that going down of course hey shouts to shouts to wheezy yo I, i'm about to say he probably did the best job I've ever seen of somebody just having to renegade, um, go ahead and record, being able to get her expressions and her reactions to what was going on because she was truly uh, surprised. That was that was really he was the star. I, I'm nice. just there, a supporting cast member, baby. Shout out to Nicole Henry. Hey, big facts. Yeah, shout out to Nicole yeah. Henry. I definitely yeah. appreciate her letting me, um, you know, come in, jump in on her set, and be able to do what I does. And, and shout out, I forgot. Um, uh, my my guy on the guitar's name, but he he definitely was <laughs> shocked as many times I tried to tell him, "Yo, do what we practice, dog." <laughs> he so like, "What we practice?" So anybody, everybody, go to nicolehenry.com. Check out if she's gonna be in your area. You guys are missing a great show. Definitely, you have not seen her in person. If you don't even know who she is, um, you, you're missing a phenomenal performance, a phenomenal jazz vocalist. Um, she was down here. She's in New York. She's about to do this. By the time this drops, she's about she'll still be a week uh, before she does a Christmas holiday show here in Miami. Um, but she, I know, I saw her on her page. She's got New York coming up, some other East Coast stuff. She's out in out on the West Coast sometime. But anybody, go check her out. She's a UM alum, of course. So we got to shout her out for that. But phenomenal, phenomenal songstress. Um, that night was great. <laughs> it was crazy too. Yeah. Just seeing her face and the, the look of why do you always do this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she had no idea what was coming. That was the best part. Awesome. Well, that was, like, you don't understand. Saying? We were when we got there, when we pulled up, um, we actually saw BJ in the in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm driving, I'm driving, BJ's walking in the garage, and I just Rolled out my window. I said, "Hey, hey, sir, you want some candy?" <laughs> the look on his face <laughs> of confusion, along with just like, is Wayne Brady gonna have to slap a bitch? <laughs> but um, after that, when we uh got downstairs, she actually broke her shoe. So then oh. it turned into a mission of trying to find. Uh, a shoe or sandals or anything for her to what yeah, you call it, it. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm I'm forcing her to go to the venue while she's like no I gotta find um a shoe and trying she's so confused as to why that why would BJ want to go get me a shoe like why would he be the one going to get sand like what are you talking why did he nah nah it's fine just let him go do it da 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 so then finally getting her in there it was 
a, a miracle that she really never caught any wind of what was going on. And I'm sitting there watching the video like it's in his pocket. Right. The box is in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the thing. I sat behind her during the um the show and everything. So she never she never noticed. And I actually had it in my um I had my little uh crocodile bag that I okay. was um with me, and then I took it out right before I wound up going up on stage. Yeah. So and ladies and gentlemen, again, we'll we'll, we'll post the video. You got to go catch us. Uh Actually, we can probably incorporate it into into the actual YouTube video, um, and then we'll post the clip on uh, on our IG and Facebook pages. But um, TikTok, yeah, and TikTok. Sorry, we're on TikTok now. Anybody yeah. have that handle? What's that handle? Thirteen Floor Podcast. Thirteen Floor Podcast. You can catch us on TikTok now. So, for those of you that you know, you encourage your kids to watch, and they don't really try to watch it. They they can catch us on TikTok now. They'll <laughs> see us. Oh. There. Yeah, we're not doing any dances though. Um, could yet, <laughs> right? Right. Negative. Two was, I think two was good. <laughs> That's. I, I think three. I think three. three. Don't, don't 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 let Brett Jones fool you. All right. He's all the right. youngest. He better be able the to knees, take a leg. The knees though. The knees might not be able to handle. He's all right. He ain't nothing wrong with his knees. Uh, good. My knees are uh, good, sir. You keep that on your side, right? <laughs> right. Well, I'm good. <laughs> right. We don't hop, so we good. I got years. That's funny. Oh, Y'all get man. arthritis in the shoulders. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that would be a sad sight. I used to put a picture. Oh, of my God. <laughs> That'll be a, I can't shim it no more, boy. <laughs> I like I just gotta move my whole upper body. Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow. Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you got to watch us on YouTube. You do have to go to our YouTube channel to get all the jokes. Um, just hearing it doesn't do any justice, but uh, yeah. So where I wanted to go was um, her like. In the video, it seemed like she was still in shock. Like the moment didn't really hit her. Was there a moment afterwards where it actually like hit? Like, wait a minute, this man just brought me up on stage in this concert and proposed to me, and I said yes. Did did that all catch up with her at some point? Yeah, I mean, but she just isn't a um. She ain't gonna give everybody no reaction. You know what I mean? Like she is not um. She very low key, so it ain't. You know what I mean? But at the same time, that's why I was so surprised to her. All she told me was, um, I asked her like what she wanted. And then I was like, do you want it to be something private or do you want like, you know what I mean? She was just like surprise me type stuff. So that's why I wound up just trying to figure out something that could be surprising. But yeah. literally it was just, uh, we pretty much winged what was on stage. Like everything from there was just, all right, let me figure out as I'm talking. Okay, okay. I like it. I like it, man. Congratulations. Congratulations, sis. We'll see if, you know, maybe you actually listen to the podcast. I think everybody else is out at this point, you know. Uh, yeah. Chris used to be the MVP, you know, now. You know, the deeper they get with us, the the less that they listen. Right. <laughs> that's what happens because when she first when she first like found out i had the pot she used to be on it heavy religiously and now she's like it's old news buddy it's every day that's Come hilarious on. that's Come hilarious on. all right let's not tell anybody else that uh so i wanted to ask y'all uh a couple of weeks ago somebody had said to me we spend more time thinking and worrying about the things that we don't want as opposed to committing time to uh, claiming and affirming the things that we do want. Did that make sense? Yeah, yes. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. And it's true. How, and is, it, is it ever something that you guys have thought about? Definitely. All the time. Not in that sense, no. I, I didn't think okay. about it as a... I just, I just know all the time, like, I don't want to do this, or I don't want to be like that, or I don't want to, da, da, so which can then in turn lead you to that path because you're saying those things consistently. I always look back at what I've 
toiled over, worried about, or did not do, and and made such um false uh you know pretenses around in my head that then I know I, I missed out on opportunities and and things of that nature. You know what I mean? Money, um, opportunities, you know, fun potential friendships, whatever. I don't know, but I know that I've missed out from you know, being so worried and stressing and, and, and creating all these false things around stuff that never happened, never was going to happen and never could have happened. Mm -hmm. Go about the whole idea yeah. of years ago, falling into the mindset of the whole speak what you want that you don't have versus what you have and you don't want, right? Mm -hmm. um, it just changing your speech pattern about, and, and that's positive self-talk. Cause we negative self talk comes naturally. Kids do it, and you don't even have to teach it. You have to unlearn that and make a positive press to make sure that happens. Yep. And catch yourself when you start doing it, and be it, and give other people around you permission to stop you when they catch you doing that. That was one of the biggest things there. Yes, hundred percent. Go ahead, yeah, so Brett. I'm you want to say something before I go? I'm constantly like reminded of that. Because uh, naturally, I'm trying to hedge against things that I don't want to see happen or trying to plan to, you know, plan for success instead of just um, instead of using using my words as to what I do want versus what I don't want to see happen. Um, it's a natural occurrence for me, but I'm constantly reminded by Chris to look at things from a, a different vantage point or speak certain things into existence or to understand that, you know, certain things happen, but other things are right around the corner. You may just, just because you can't see it or feel it yet, doesn't mean it isn't there. Um, but we're going to walk and act as if it is there because that's what invites it into our life. We're able to receive it in that, in that way. <clears throat> yeah. So the, the vein in which it was said was like, you, you, so something as simple as, hey, what do you want to eat, right? And, and think about how we practice this. What do you want to eat? Well, I don't want this. I don't want my common, yeah, my, my common answer is, hey, I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I don't want X, Y, and Z. And the thing is, when we repeatedly do that, we live in the energy of what we don't want. And we manifest mm -hmm. that. That's what we attract because we constantly mm -hmm. talk about what we don't want as opposed to what we want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I thought it was a very interesting, um, just something I've never thought of. And for me, you know, my, my task for myself is, okay, let me start writing down the things that I want like exactly what i want oh mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's a book out there too um i had to look up to make sure i had the name right it's shad helmshedder it's what to say when you talk to yourself um it's an old old book but it's got some basic principles in there um that really grounds you um some simple things as a as a uh, a daily self talk script um self-talk is what they call it sorry daily self-talk uh would you again some of the bread what are you inviting into your life how do you start your day what do you what are you manifesting out there right it uh, it goes back to many different principles that transcends you're not talking about a religious perspective you're not talking about this it's just like these are the things that i'm speaking for myself for my family for my friends for my business for my finances for everything around me like you're speaking that positive in your advice and again once once you speak it out there the universe has no choice but to listen. You, you, energy only begets more. You can't dissipate energy. You can't. I said that wrong. Sorry. All my science geeks out there. Energy can dissipate, but you can't destroy it. Right? So you put that positive energy out there, it's got to go somewhere. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's like that superpower. We talked about this a few months, maybe a few months ago. Um, understanding the the power of your word and the power of like that perspective. Um, I have family members that I'm 
constantly trying to retrain how they look at life um, because it's it's from a very negative standpoint. And that's by design, by, by experience, by actions that, you know, they have taken, others have taken against them. And so you, they, they live in a space where it's hard to see anything positive out of certain situations. Um, and so me not living in that space, I can, con- I have to constantly throw that energy at them because at, at some point, you know, it, it'll start to stick. And then once enough of the right things happen, you know, for these people, um, then that's when the mind state starts to shift, you know, and it's just a, it's a muscle, it's practice, you you have to do it. And it's not necessarily easy, because, you know, we form these habits, I think, BJ, you, you just said it, like, it, it's, it's in, it's in our children, like, it's, it's very easy to do on a daily basis. You don't have, um, you don't have to teach it. That's the thing that comes naturally. Right. Because a lot of that stuff is programming into us. I mean, Think about it. How many times are you told no as a child? Versus how many times you say yes, or you can, or you can do this. And people laugh. Sometimes you say when parents like you're, you're having um, false hope, giving kids false hope when you do stuff, but not you're, you're taken away from that programming of, I can't, I'm scared to, I don't want to try like, and programming to, to get to the point where, I can do this. I have faith in myself. And again, even if I don't right. make it this time, that's not that doesn't mean it's over with. I can keep on moving. I can keep pushing forward with it. Exactly. And that's that's kind of where you want to get you know, where you want to get in your mind, um, especially when, you know, with the amount of adversity we 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 deal with on an everyday basis living in this this human experience. It, nothing is ever, you know, going to be perfect, but I feel like when you make enough of the right decisions, when you you walk in the light and that positivity and you constantly speak those things into your life, whether you get hit by a bus or not, like you you kind of, you you learn to, what is the phrase? Be like water. Um, that's <laughs> something that I've been, I've been working at for a very, you know, long time over the course of this year. I'm not n- nowhere near where I want to be with it, but you learn to be like water when those things hit because, it's always going to be something. Something's always going to on a, going to come. How do you react to it? How do you deal with it? And it, it it's it's that positive mind state of knowing that you can get through. Um, you will get through. You just have to figure out a way to get through. How fast can you switch from that mindset? And I'll give you an example because the other day, Nandi, we all know that he's like a snack master. Um, so he was. And one of his snack binges and just going, going, going. And he looked at me and he goes, I'm not even going to ask you because you're going to say no. And I was like, well, before you go there and say, I'm going to say no, what if I say yes to to you the whole day or the last week? So I needed him to look backwards. And I didn't think that I was doing what we're talking about today, this week. But I told him to look backwards and see all the yeses before he got to that no. And he shouldn't assume that it's always no. He should still ask no matter what. His thoughts are, and so, that's the that's stuff that we, as as kids, we we and as grown men, we can say we don't ask for stuff today because what we programmed and heard know so many times before. Right, that can be from anybody, our parents, our spouse, our kids, our job. Ask for that promotion. Ask for that rate. I like in it. Why don't we ask for the fear of of getting told no? So if you get told no, what you already made up knowing your mind. So if you, if you get told no. How's it gonna hurt you? And that's the biggest thing is getting over the. <clears throat> it's uh, not the easy. fact that it doesn't it doesn't mean nothing. We 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 are are so prone to to no seeming like it is this like you know desolate destination that you are automatically cast into like being in a jail cell or something. It's like no, just means no. Not like now. it's not. You know what I mean. And a lot of times it's just yes to something else. And so it, it's it's getting over that fear of feeling like there's a. a uh finalization with the word no that it just like you know means that there is like something negative co- um you know coming with it i don't know so that's part of it right that's a big part of it but i think there's also the case where we get exhausted by hearing the word no like okay like i want these things and 
no, 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 right? So even as a child, you hear no so much. And for those parents that give reasons for the no, because we know there are some that don't give reasons behind the no, um, there is that negative, there's always that negative, there's that negative outcome, right? Oh, well, if this, then this negative thing is going to happen. Mm-hmm. So then you grow up and you're just tired of hearing no. You just want to get to the point to where can I hear some yeses? Yeah. Will mm-hmm. somebody say yes, right? Without me having to justify, here's 100 reasons why you should say yes. Mm-hmm. Right. You- and it's just, it's one of those things where I think you have to make peace with, again, if we focus on the things that we do want, right? Okay, this is just what I want. And you commit to that. Does that change the energy? Or because you're always thinking there's going to be no, or the things that I don't want, well, that's the energy that you subscribe to. That's the energy that's open. So everything around you gets into that. Do you believe that no, and is is that that the end all be all? Or do you believe that no is just that person said no onto the next one or onto the next idea or onto the next thing or no means not yet, not right now. Like is is that no definite and there's no other way around it? Like is that one person the gatekeeper to everything you want? And it and a lot of times we put that we give that person that ability to do that. Like we 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 give them the power to do that. And it's really holding on to the reins and saying, I asked you, you said no. Okay. What do I need to do to make sure? Because I know what I want. And I, I've told myself, yes, that's what I'm going to go get. So no, it's not th- your path. I got another path over here I got to create or I got to go find. Stop. We got to stop giving that power away. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the important thing to teach kids. Again, even if it's me as the parent, right? I'm not telling you to go behind my back and do something like in, uh, just certain rules, okay, of course. But mm-hmm. if it's if it's something like you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. I want you to become a lawyer. I'm like, like, no. What do you want to do? Right. Like that's what mom and dad wants me to do. But I want to do X, Y, Z. What is my path? And a lot of people just don't have anybody to, to to shed light on that path for them. They just think mom and dad is controller of everything. So. It's hard, it's, but by no means is this is an easy thing to do. And I by no means have it. I still feel constantly with it. And I beat myself up because of like, why did I let that person hold that over me? Right. But what am I going to do? When I realize that that boss is not the make a gatekeeper of my salary or my position, game over. <laughs> when I realize even going and get, I, I want to move in that house. I want this car. I want this. Okay, so what does that mean I have to do to make that happen? Like, Mm -hmm. my wants and needs, yes, there's a separation, but I work hard for the things I want. So there's no reason that no man should deny that from me. Or woman. Or woman, sorry. No, no, no hostility out there. No, they. (laughs) They were there. True. It's funny, I was having a conversation about something similar earlier today. It's like the wants what people want and a lot of this some of what we're talking about it it stems from fear and knowing what you want out of life or out of out of life in general because we'll just leave the umbrella there and I think people you know fall into the trap of sometimes like hitching you know their wagon to somebody else's cart or not taking the time because of the fear of what comes with that space of just figuring out what they want. Like it's okay to not know exactly what that is at this particular moment in time, but there are a plethora of opportunities that exist within, you know, everyday life or the world for you to explore, to kind of figure that out. And I think that's the biggest thing that I try to impress upon my kids. Um, because I don't want them to feel like they have to be perfect. I want them to feel like they have to try and give good effort and do whatever it is that they want to do. That's it. You learn. 
and and learn from the mistakes. Like, let's not repeat the same thing over and over again, right? Because if I can build them like that as a child, then as an adult, then they have those tools and they can figure out what it is, you know, they want. They have enough of what it takes to push themselves in that direction. And I think when we get into adulthood and we haven't quite figured that out and there's pressure, there's pressure from uh, our peers and not necessarily that they put on us, but we feel it because, you know, we're trying to compare ourselves to our peers or there's pressure for, you know, our job to perform in a certain manner. And then you get into this, this imposter syndrome stuff. And, you know, it, it's all stems out of that lack of knowing what you want. And so if you can figure that out or spend that, spend that time to do that, you, you kind of forego some of that, but it's okay to not know, you know, you don't have to be fearful of that space, you know, grab onto that opportunity and stretch yourself so you can figure out what it is that you personally want. So I think fear is one thing. And I also think um, it's the evolution of a people, right? You, every single person on here, all of us know what it's like. Well, now we realize what it was to not have money, right? And parents just trying to make ends meet. Um, to a degree, you are working from a poverty mindset or a financially challenged mindset to where it's ingrained in you, be happy with what you got, right? Be thankful for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have, where that kind of closed the door, right? Mm -hmm. To what's possible because you didn't necessarily grow up thinking, well, if I decide this is what I want, <laughs> right? I'm planting that seed and hopefully, not hopefully, but things will start aligning for me to open up that door to make it possible, right? So that whole what's possible is still kind of in its, in its infancy with us um, as a people, as what's possible. We look at uh, celebrities and we look at athletes and we think, oh, man. Right. And for a long time, it was almost like, OK, well, I got to do one of those mm -hmm. to get that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. I can't do it just as a regular person when that's totally inaccurate. Mm -hmm. And that, again, becomes the reason why we need to see people that look like us um, that may not be an athlete or celebrity that are doing it and they're making the things that they want possible consistently. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I think the one of the bigger things that is access to people, right? So until social media, more uh, more more so now than any anything else, really, you're seeing people like they did what with what? Like, how did they even do that? Like who did they have? They just learned it themselves and did it. Like, I can do that too. Like, I don't have to go. Say, I don't have to go through all these years and go to college and, and go and do all this stuff just because that's what everybody else had to do. Mm -hmm. Guilty of it. Guilty of preaching yeah. it. Right? Like, until you have access to that, like, even as, as, as an adult, you're like, you still, you heard of people like, oh, they just, they were in the right place at the right time or they had the right connections. Well, there's plenty of information out there now and information is at your fingertips. Like, are we going to get it? Are we going to use it? Are we going to pursue those that can teach us? First of all, somebody has to be willing to teach, but you have to be willing to learn as well. And that may mean giving up something you you want now um, and um, delay gratification and get out of this, this instant gratification mode that a lot of people are in. Like, I want it today. I want it now. I want it by next year. Well, it may take five years from now, but keep pushing for it, right? But see, I, I think that I want it now. I want it today is part of getting there because you believe that you could have it now. Yes, but they haven't got the fact. I, I agree. 
so let me let me let me backtrack. So I agree with you there. So you have to change your mentality first that if I don't get it today, it's not over with. We don't coping mechanism mm-hmm. and failure today. Kids, people today can't cope with. I can't even say kids. A lot of people, the first time I fail is over or my whole world is upside down or I'm losing everything or my family turned against me or I turn my back on this. Like that, that's something you're going to have to say. Failure is going to occur in your pursuit of whatever you want at some point in time. Go back to what Britt just said. What did you learn from it? Yeah. How are we using that overall? <laughs> but if you don't have those coping mechanisms, that's where you then you get this this time of day where anxiety, stress, everything else is all, all at an all time high because people don't know how to cope with it's not coming through, it's not coming to fruition. My whole world is about to end, or I lost everything. Now I'm 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 going to do something drastic. So I agree with the, the get I want it now mentality is good, but you also have to develop the I know how to cope with not getting it now if I if it doesn't come to fruition. Right. Right. If if I don't get it now, it's not that I'm not going to get it. Correct. Right. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. everybody everybody's success and everybody's situation is not the same. Just because I see you do it doesn't mean I'll be able to do it in the same yeah. amount of time. Or in the same fashion, it may take me longer. It may take me more resources. Um, it may call for sacrifices that you didn't have to make because of resources you had that I'm not even privy to that that I I didn't know you had. I didn't see you as successful. That piece is huge. It's the comparison piece, yep. right? Mm-hmm. How do we? That's like the next level of it. Don't compare. Don't don't compare yourself. Yep. Right? Yeah, you got to run your own race. You got to run your own race. You you don't know what that person has done Mm -hmm. to get what they have or who that person knows that got them to where they are. Or who they did. (laughs) That too. Or who did them. (laughs) That too. (laughs) Hey, hey now. Um, Wow, yeah. No, that's that's true. I've always tried to to not live in that comparison comparison mindset and just live me how I am. Um, look back at the things, the choices that were made, seeing how to adjust, not regret, but adjust to ensure that that same historical path isn't taken again. And then teach somebody else the lesson that I learned from that experience. So if I can teach somebody the path I took, it may help them with that, that that gratification for themselves. It may help them say, yes, I can have it now. I can see where it's going with it. Um, I can give you a good example of my my cousin who is just out of high school, uh, has an opportunity to become an apprentice for an electrician. Um, so I'm pushing him like, hey, you don't have to go to college. You don't have to do these paths. And you're probably wind up you know, doing a lot more with that apprenticeship and getting your own business then your friends who are going to college now who may come out later on with a six thousand dollar um you know confusion and still not even know what the hell they want to do and still, still you know what I mean exactly. it'd be it, it just a uh, uh just like that it did <laughs> point and, blank you know, period whole different career that they went to school with but so I told him that but he but his his thing was oh well I gotta get a car in order to become an apprentice for an electrician they said that I said okay so what are you doing to get there? Like what's what what are you doing now? Oh well, I'm I want to take a couple of jobs here at the restaurant. So okay, what I hear is you're doing a lot of gig jobs and a lot of quick money jobs. I said that's a lot of cash in your hand. That cash can be dangerous if you don't know how to use it properly. So what what's your end goal with that with these side jobs you're doing to get to your your process? So I then challenged him by saying I'm going to give you a call back on January 15th, and I want to know how mm-hmm. much you raised, set forth, put to the side to get to the goal you want to get because there is no no anymore. There is no more excuses. There's no more, I can't do this or it's too hard or it's too far away. You want this, let's make it happen. So I think we didn't have, we don't have, where we have had with people and some of us did, some of us didn't have people in our corner saying like, okay, this is what you want. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let up on the pressure of what you told me you want. You said it out of your, out of your mouth, what your, your want was. So now I know what your want is. I'm gonna continue to help you see that 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 end game that end goal that finish line for that that process for 
And that's something that's missing for a lot of people. They don't have somebody in their corner. Like you said, there's not the resource or somebody or a mentor to just say, well, no, you said you wouldn't do this. So why are you doing this? Or why are you being a server now? You said you wouldn't do this. How's that? You know, how's that getting to your, your end game? Having somebody who, who holds you accountable and, and is able to check on you is invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Um, and I think this is timely for uh, the time in which this episode is coming out um, in the holiday season, right? There's a, there's a whole lot of I don't want <laughs> mm-hmm. happening uh, during this season, which is supposed to be a, a season of, of giving and um, joy yeah. and, and, and thankfulness, right? So mm-hmm. um, I know for me, I'm going to be intentional with writing down what I want, right? And then revisiting that. Um, that's my takeaway. And then and, and hopefully those of you that are out there listening um, will do something similar or encourage your kids to do something similar, mm-hmm. right? And for those of you that don't have kids, it's your nieces and nephews. You know, what do they want? Your friend circle, who you hang around with, like seriously. Yep. Because a lot of times what happens is we project things that we want on ourselves onto other people that we think are going to have the opportunity to do it. Mm. So we'll let y'all marinate on that. I think um, there is some value in kind of uh, following up to this and that follow up becomes that mentorship and accountability. What does that look like? So uh, we will process that and bring that to you on the next episode. If you're looking for a follow-up on how you create uh, those circles and uh, people that can hold you accountable. And until the next episode, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us today. That's it for now, folks. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We're done here on the 13th floor where the furniture isn't always the best, but the views are amazing. amazing.